Hey everyone, welcome back so soon. Um, if you remember from the other video, I said that I wanted to spend a few a shorter videos talking about some specific uh, experiences during Peace Corps training. And this one, as you can guess from the title, is going to be talking about uh, my host family. So host families are pretty much the cornerstone of Peace Corps. You know, you're supposed to send an American to live with a host family who will uh, teach you the culture, maybe a local language, make sure you're getting fed, make sure you're safe, and make sure you're uh, you're not missing your real family all too much. For me, I had a really great host family during my training. They were there uh, day one I arrived at the training center. We all like got a huge bowl of this super, super good, delicious holiday rice and ate it with our hands because, you know, we just want to be sharing. No spoons, it got a little bit messy, even though some of the Americans were eating spoons and looking at me kind of weird for being messy. But it was really cool to have to share that first moment with my host family, you know, to say like, hey, I'm here, I want to get to know you, I want us to do well together, um, I want us to have a lot of fun uh, and see what happens. My host family was run by a retired military commander. Um, he had served for mostly uh, Lanzana Conte and just had been around for a long time, received a huge, pe a huge pension, had four wives, a few of them lived elsewhere. I think he had even divorced one or two, which isn't all too uncommon in Guinea. He didn't speak French, pretty much not at all. And um, so there was a lot of a huge communication barrier between us. Um, but my host brother, Abu, he was about the same age, but a high school student studying, I think he was in 12th grade, science maths, which is like a math track, um, pretty smart kid. And he spoke French and he was able to translate a lot of things for me. And so it was really nice, you know, speaking, speaking my broken French to Abu, who would speak it to uh, his dad, who would then translate his own feelings. And he had said some things that were like really nice, you know, like, welcome to our family. Um, we're going to take care of you and uh, a really common phrase in, uh, in Guinea is on ensemble, like we're together and it means like we're together through all of our struggles and through all of our um, celebrations too. So I was with this host family for three months and I didn't really have too many problems. Um, one of the biggest issues was food. I talked about that in the other video, just, you know, the food was often cold when I got there or it was something I couldn't eat and I had to talk to uh, my host brother Abu about it and then Peace Corps about it and finally that got changed towards the end, just getting food that was maybe a little bit warmer by the time I got home and then also um, the, the host father was actually giving me bananas and bread in the morning with peanut butter. Uh, it was, they were, it was hard for them to like realize that I liked eating bananas and peanut butter and with bread um, just because they weren't used to that. For them, peanut butter was just made for sauces. Like, why would you put peanut butter on your bananas? Why would you put peanut butter on your bread? You know, just these cultural differences. Um, other people that lived in the compound, there were several older women, like just the older wives, and they were, you know, uh, very nice. In Ghanaian culture, you have to sal uh, salute everyone. You have to say hello. How are you? How are the kids? How are the, how's the husband? How are the wives? How are the kids again? Like you have to do it on repeat. And the more you like someone, the more times you repeat it. And that's what a host family will teach you right off the back is like all these different salutations. So imagine me every morning having to say hello. How are you? How did you sleep? How are the kids? And then go to the next wife and hey, how are you? How are the kids? Even though they were standing right next to each other. And um, it's a really, it's, it's a really funny experience because uh, you think it's like a joke or it's like a play or something like that, but it's just on, it's just the way things are done there. One of the things that I really liked about my host family, um, besides that they were really considerate about my, my space, you know, I liked having my own room um, that nobody was allowed to go into. Just because, like, you know, sometimes you need to, like, step back, you need to, like, relax, meditate, do whatever. Um, but they were also careful to ensure that, you know, I was getting to see Debreka. So my host brother, Abu, would take me on these walks. And walking with your friends, walking with your boyfriend or girlfriend or, or whatever is really um, essential in Ghanaian culture because 
not too many people have motos and not too many places can you use a motorcycle or a car to get to. So walking and seeing things and just talking about what you see, uh, that's part of the culture. So Abu would take me to the art university and I got to see these performances that were really out of place. Like I saw like students rapping at the art university. I saw them singing, uh, just uh, painting, uh, doing all different things that were really, really cool and hearing super good French. And some of them could even speak English because they might have uh, lived in Sierra Leone or Liberia, some other country. Another place that Abu uh, took me to was um, to like this marshland area. And it's still in Debreka, we could walk to it, but it was just an interesting transition going from like our house, which was like on stable ground into these marshes with reeds taller than my head. Couldn't really see around, didn't know where we were going. He's like, I got a surprise for you. So we ended up going into this really, really nice house. You know, some, some rich guy lived there. And there were art students there practicing for a dance uh, that they're going to put on, like a play. And the choreography that was going to the critical, constructive criticism that they were delivering to each other um, showed that these were professionals who, who could be doing just as well in New York or LA with some play. And here they are in this house in Debreka, in one of the poorest countries in the world you know, just putting on a play that they wanted to put on for their friends and family and uh, colleagues. So that was something that was really cool. Um, some of the things that I did not like about my host family, and that's just some of the experience shared by quite a few other volunteers that lived in Guinea, was that um, there can be sometimes violent abuse, and especially dealt towards kids. You know, there's, they're not one to use words to reprimand their children. Um, it's, and it's oftentimes done by the, the women, the older women, um, disciplining the children, telling them that you need to be respectful, you need to learn like how, what language you need to use, like there's like uh, different tones. And instead of just telling them that, they would actually hit them every time. And so it wasn't uncommon for me to be asleep and to wake up to a kid screaming and because he's getting hit so hard. And uh, one of the most violent incidences I saw was an older uh, sister. She threw like a five-year-old or six-year-old little girl up against the wall. And, um, and I don't know, it was probably something as silly as like not cleaning the dishes and to be thrown against the wall. Another incident, like the, an older sister uh, took a a huge um, l plywood to like her nine-year-old little brother and she didn't hit him with it. I actually stepped in in that case and said, hey, you need to step back. And some of the neighbors came over, um, a few of the males came over and stopped it. And it was just something that was really weird was that in my experiences, the the men, even though they could, they would deal like out punishment as well, they were less likely to do that than the women. And um, it was very strange to see that um, it was something I had to talk to Peace Corps about. They had to send someone over to the host family to talk to the host father and say, you know, that's not acceptable. Like, you know, we should be in more control of ourselves. Um, but yeah, the, other than that, like the host family was great. They were really nice. They helped me set up my hammock. I had a hammock that I put up outside a few times. Um, they were really quick to change when I talked to them as, or at least I asked Peace Corps to talk to them in their language. Um, you know, they wanted, they wanted me to be happy and that's what a lot of Peace Corps families, the host families want to do. They want to make sure that, they're, that their volunteers are happy, they're going to stay, they're going to be able to do well. So if for anyone who wants to join Peace Corps, like, you know, look forward to that. Look forward to having a host family who, who will care about you at your training site. Uh, sometimes you'll even have a host family at your site too. And look to make those relationships that you can really be, um, that you can enjoy. And, you know, have someone to go back to whenever you go back to your training. Okay? So that was just my experience with my host family in Debreka. And I'm going to talk about a few other things and the other videos. Look out for them. Okay, guys? Bye.